What makes a drug hazardous is different from what you may think. A lot of times people will say, well, I have a list from my waste hauler, for example, of those drugs that have to be thrown away differently. And that's a very important issue. That's an environmental protection agency issue that protects the environment. This is a different situation. These are drugs that affect us. Largely, they're ones that are either carcinogenic or that they have some kind of reproductive toxicity. There's two different issues that confuse people a bit, and it's probably because the name hazardous and that word hazardous is in both of them. Waste haulers identify drugs, and they're really hazardous materials at that point, some of which are drugs. They are a hazard to the environment. So your waste hauler list is a list of hazardous materials, some of which are drugs, that need to be handled a separate way. That's a totally different situation from what we need to do for USP 800. USP 800 uses the NIOSH list of hazardous drugs. These are drugs that are hazardous to us as healthcare workers. What is further confusing to people is there are a handful of drugs, about seven or eight of them, that are on both of those lists. So you have to pay attention to both sets of standards. The National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health publishes the list of hazardous drugs. It's called antineoplastics and other hazardous drugs in healthcare settings. They have started this list, it goes all the way back to 2004, was the first list that NIOSH printed, and they update this from time to time. The current list is from 2016. The NIOSH list is sorted into three types of hazardous drugs. They're called tables. Table one are antineoplastics, so we think of those as the oncology agents largely. Table two are non-antineoplastics, so those are ones that meet one of those other definitions, like the reproductive toxin, for example, as well as other toxicities. That's table two. Table three are drugs that are on that list only because they're reproductive toxins. Now, there may be reproductive toxins in table one and table two, but that's because those drugs also meet one other criteria that defines a hazardous drug. I don't know that any of the different tables are more important than another. I think the issue that most people identify is the risk of chemotherapy, of oncology agents, those antineoplastics that are on table one. But the definition of a hazardous drug has been set. And even if it's not a carcinogen, it could be a reproductive toxin. So those drugs on table two and three could be, depending on the dosage forms that people manipulate, also issues. Whenever the NIOSH list is changed, or when an organization would get a new drug that they may have recognized was on the prior list but didn't address because they never used it before, whenever that occurs, so either the change or a new drug comes into play in an organization, whoever put together, whatever committee I would hope, put together the assessment of risk needs to take a look at that again and identify what may need to be changed or what may need to be deleted or edited in some other way.